to Hollywood is a star from Mitzi. To dream the impossible dream, that's the lyric from Mano La Mancha. Well, this is my impossible dream. Someone tell that Don Quixote dude to stand aside. Me, I've got some tall tilling at windmills to do. Come, Sancho, onward, Rosanante. Hey, Polly, I hereby nominate Miss Mitzi Shore, solo maestro of the world-famous comedy store in Los Angeles, for a well-deserved star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Who's with me? A star for Mitzi Shore? Now, why climb that insurmountable mountain? Simply because it's not there. Why would a guy try to do what cannot be done? Some might say that it's in the challenge. Others might say that that man knows something others don't. More could say that it's all fierce determination. And even others might say this man is just crazy. These motives are all fine and dandy, but for me, there's only one overwhelming reason. Because it's the right thing to do. And ironically, she'll never know. Now, I'm not some reckless do-gooder gallivanting around Hollywood trying to spoil some unsuspecting folks' sad times with a kind deed. Nah, that's not me. But there's one last thing I feel compelled to set straight. This is personal. Hey, let's be realistic. This is damn near impossible. She owned, managed, and guided all five of the comedy stores for almost 40 years, including arguably the first three-act comedy club in the world. If a comic didn't win her support, then they just sulked off and went elsewhere. To say Mitzi was hands-on about her chosen acts (laughs) is to put it lightly. Insert your own Mitzi joke here. Her alumni include the likes of David Letterman, Robin Williams, Richard Pryor, Jim Carrey, Michael Keaton, Andy Kaufman, Roseanne Barr, Andrew, Dyke, Clay, Gary Shandling, Andy Garcia, and the real Gallagher. We shouldn't forget Richard Lewis, Rodney Dangerfield, Gary Muldeer, Steve Landisberg, George Miller, and Mike Binder, now a famous film director. Sam Kennison, Kevin Nealon, Robert Townsend, Jimmy Walker, Jeff Altman, Johnny Witherspoon, Marsha Warfield, Paul Rodriguez, Jamie Foxx, and more weigh-in brothers than you can shake a stick at. And many, many more. By the way, if you think L.A. Sunset Strip is an easy place to conduct show business, then just visit and judge for yourself. Just ask David Letterman how vital to his career Mitzi and the store were. Mitzi convinced him not to quit and go home several times. Before the world bowed at his feet, Robin Williams used to sleep on her office couch waiting for his paycheck. Richard Pryor steadfastly depended on Mitzi's stages to work on the jokes for his incredible stand-up movies. Ask Paul Mooney. Michael Keaton would become the first movie Batman. Jim Carrey squired Linda Ronstadt to Mitzi's showrooms to show off his crazy and vaunted uniqueness. Gary Shandling, just a short time after being sent to the showers, came back to amazingly funny heights. Andy Dice Clay should clean Mitzi's gutters until he dies to pay her back for her unending help to his career. Hey, Dice Man, remember when we used to live in her mansion flop house for wayward stand-ups? <laughs> Many of the stories behind her alumni successes reveal her huge heart, hidden as it was, underneath her fortress-like public image. She was a tiger mom for her comics many decades before the public ever heard the phrase. Mitzi's graduates made more TV appearances than there are people in Malibu. Letterman 6,000 plus set the TV record. Robin and Jim Carrey movies made mega millions. Jim Varney made seven earnest films. Andy Garcia did the Godfather series after appearing in Mitzi's main room. Three Oscars, dozens of Emmys, four Grammys, and a double handful of Golden Globes. Not bad for a tiny little nightclub, huh? What some critics and authors have called the golden age of stand-up comedy on the West Coast probably wouldn't have ever happened without the comedy store and Mitzi Shore 
providing access, opportunity, a staircase to TV, and her blessings for her hand-picked and soon-to-be-famous. Now, I don't want to get all driving Miss Daisy on you, but as a stand-up, if Mitzi in the Comedy Store happened to have assisted you in your stand-up career, then it's time for you to reciprocate that good turn and help her. While I'm awaiting help from past Comedy Store graduates on getting Mitzi her star, I won't shame them here, but if they won't acknowledge receiving Mitzi's support, I'll go to the mass media and tell the truth on all those ungrateful bastards. Now, there's a matter of fees to pay for Mitzi's star, some $30,000 plus, and its official placement on Hollywood Boulevard. Maybe we could do a telephone. Maybe we call Whoopi Goldberg. Maybe roast Will Ferrell. No, no, don't do an insult banquet. Actually set a fire and roast Will Ferrell. Please? There, I've laid out my simple plans, but I've saved the, my best pitch for the closer. Since her youngest son's Showtime special, Polly Stands Alone, revealed her current medical condition, it's safe to say, Dementia is a bitch. With her massive memory loss, Missy won't know what her admirers are doing for her. Sad but true. This isn't a matter of repayment. It's a last recognition for her vision and successes. Join her children. Peter, who's the king of the comedy store now. Sandy. Polly and Scott, and our Comedy Store comics to help get a star for Mitzi. This is my impossible dream. Because I'm so old, I, I don't selfie, link, face, or twat. So if you want to help, please call or email Peter and Polly Shore at the Comedy Store. Tell them you want a star for their mom on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And Mitzi will never, ever know. But we will. The lady who made this entire show possible, ladies and gentlemen, who we all love, is Mitzi Shore. We love you.